Hi everyone, this is Katie Morrow bringing you this ESU 8 Wednesday webinar recorded March of 2017. Keynote is my absolute favorite app. It's built in and free on any Mac or iPad. It has consistent tools and compatibility with the rest of the Apple ecosystem. And it allows for creativity and productivity, both essential skills in any of our line of work as educators. These are the reasons why I often say you can use Keynote for almost anything and why I chose to focus on this one powerful app for this week's webinar. If you want to learn how to get started with the Keynote app, either for Mac or iPad, do check out the free Apple Teacher Starter Guides available on the iTunes Store. You can download both and follow through the pages on how to use the basic toolbars and features of either Keynote for Mac or iPad. Follow that up with the Apple Teacher Badge and you'll be well on your way to becoming a Keynote expert. But that's not what this session is all about. Instead, I want to focus on some applications of Keynote, some possible lesson ideas for the classroom, some ways to allow students to document their learning and share it with others. And to package those ideas, I put them together in an iTunes U course, which I invite anyone to enroll in with this enroll code. So if you have the iTunes U app on your iPad, enter the enroll code and join this course. Here you'll see all kinds of ideas of using Keynote in the classroom, including um, ways to structure your projects based on six kind of um, starting themes, I guess, or inspirational ideas. Um, it does have reference to those starter guides once again, and some ways to download a sample Keynote file to track your learning as you work through the course. The activities are listed and numbered, um, each of them with the resources available and the prompt to practice yourself, along with the skills you'll need to master in order to do that activity. Many of them have student product examples, definitely extension ideas for how you would apply this to the classroom. And there's even some bonus activities. And it doesn't stop there. In the additional resources section, you can find even more lesson ideas, all centered on the app Keynote. The six focused activities that I'd like to feature right now, we're going to go through just a brief overview because we know that you can dive in deeper in the course. And the first one is called the Keynote to Coding. To put it simply, in this lesson activity, it's not about the actual computer code that students are generating, but rather a set of instructions where you're telling a computer to do an action, because that essentially is what coding is. If you think about it, there's a lot of offline coding activities that are very valuable for students as well. The process of giving instructions, listening to instructions, following instructions, all is, is wonderful whether you're using um, digital tools or offline analog just human interaction as well like this activity we featured at our elementary science Olympiad at ESU 8 where students gave codes to building a set of Lego block structures um, to their partner who could not see them but had to use just their instructions to replicate that structure so that's basically the the backbone of this lesson and it uses tangram shapes which students would create in Keynote and then the inspector which gives dimensions and um, details for each of the shapes that they've then created for their tangram figure. That's the student's code. Um, now the, the resources in the course for this lesson um, from April Ricard, they go through it step by step so that you can replicate it with your students and explains more in detail how to find that code in the inspector and then share it with each other and see if they can then in turn replicate the same tangram shape from the, the, their partner student's code. So it might be something very simple like this. And this idea really um, requires the knowledge and the skill of being able to use the shapes tool in Keynote. And, and the shapes tool is very powerful actually. So I'm going to take a few minutes here to explain um, some things that you can do with shapes that actually will take us into the next lesson idea as well. 
Keynote is a great tool for creating original artwork and illustrations. I'm going to show you how just using the simple shapes tools allows you to become an artist all within Keynote. We're going to start with a new standard sized white presentation theme and we'll actually delete out the placeholders so that we just have a white canvas. Maybe zoom it down just a little bit so we can see the edges of our canvas. And we're going to build an ice cream cone as our first original graphic here. So we'll start with the shape of the cone, a triangle, and um, extend it out so that we have a tall, skinny triangle. Um, we do need to rotate that. So in our Shapes Inspector, in the, over here in the Arrange tab, we'll first rotate that triangular triangle shape so that it is 180 degrees from the way that we initially started so that the tip is pointing down. Um, we're going to fill this with a different color because we want it to look like a cone. So we'll go back to the Style tab. Um, we could do Advanced Image Fill and choose some of the pre-selected colors. We could also do a solid image. Let's just choose a gradient and let's blend together a couple shades of brown. So we'll, um, we don't see one here in the color picker. Let's click on the color palette and we can choose from a regular brown here. And for the second color, let's go back out to here and you know, this one might choose, might need a little bit more uh, of selecting of a color that's nearby the brown. So we could start with the brown, go over into the um, slider, and then change the, the shading or the tone of that brown. And at any of these colors, you can select a color that matches something else on your screen, anything. You can um, use the, the color dropper and actually click inside of any other color on your screen. Here I'm getting some, I'm sampling some gray from the actual toolbar menu. Um, and you can also take any color that you have um, being used at a current time and drag it into one of your holding spots so that you can use it again and again. Um, let's go ahead and go with this kind of gradient from gray to brown and, and call that our ice cream cone color. We can obviously change the um, angle at which that gradient is applied. And one other thing that I want to do to make this ice cream cone look a little more three-dimensional is just sh add a shadow, a curved shadow that you can kind of see adds some depth to it. All right, next we'll make our ice cream. So let's start with a um, circular shape. Blue ice cream isn't probably a typical flavor. So let's go ahead and change that um, fill on the shape that we have selected to something that would be our ice cream, preferred ice cream flavor. Let's go with some grape or raspberry. Um, again, if you want to add a little bit of a shadow to it, it might give it some um, three-dimensional shape or without. I'm going to drag this down and actually make it a little bit smaller so we have some more room on the top of our cone. Okay, now we need the ice cream to drip over the edge. So we're going to use another shape um, it's actually the pen tool in the shapes palette. And this one works by defining the endpoints. So I'm going to click when I want to point, and I'm going to click and drag when I want to curve. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to click. I'm going to click. For this next one, I'm going to um, click and drag. And you can see it kind of adds an, a beveled edge. Then I'm going to click to make a point. And then come out here and click and drag to get a curve. And then click and then click and drag to make a curve, and then click, and then click and drag to make a curve, and then click, and then click and drag to make a curve, and then click. Now, for the pen tool to actually make a, a shape, I have to enclose it, so I have to come back to where I started and hit enter. But now this is defined as, um, as a full, complete shape, so I can take it and fill it, select it first, take off the borderline and fill it with the same color as my ice cream. And I'm actually going to join the two together. So I'm going to select the fringes of the ice cream, hold down my command key and select the scoop of ice cream and go up to the format menu down to shapes and lines and unite those two shapes. So now it becomes one intersected um, scoop of ice cream. Uh, another cool thing in here under the Format, Shapes and Lines menu is to make it editable. And now every 
um, handle, every end point can be adjusted exactly like so. And you can decide. I mean, it really gives you the freeform ability to feel like an illustrator or an artist. All right, so we're going to hit enter. Um, we could actually duplicate that scoop of ice cream and paste it on top. So we could copy and paste and maybe change this color to another color. And we've got a double decker um, shape, a scoop of ice cream, double decker ice cream cone. Let's put it into more vanilla. Um, it's, not, it's, no, it's worth noting that you can arrange these shapes by sending them backward and forward if you want to change the order of the ice cream as well. All right. So now we need a cherry on top. Let's go ahead and get a circle shape. Put it up, position it where we want it. We definitely want this to be colored with a red fill. So we can just choose that from the styles menu if we don't mind a little bit of texture. And let's add a stem on top of our cherry. For the stem of the cherry, I'm just going to use this curved line from the shapes menu and position it where it needs to be on top of the cherry and definitely shorten it a bit here and change that curvature so it's not quite as big and bold. But I might want to make it a little bit thicker. So in my stroke, I'm just going to change the points or the thickness of it and maybe tone it down a little bit so it's not quite so um, dark black. All right, there we have our um, cherry on top of our ice cream cone. Others. So for this one, we are going to illustrate a bite out of the ice cream cone. We'll just go ahead and use that pen tool once again, and we'll start with a straight line, but then click and click and drag to uh, make a curved line. Again, click to make a point, and then click and drag to make a curve, and then click to make a point, and then click and drag to make a curve. And we'll close this up and hit enter so that we now have this kind of um, teeth mark shape. So select our illustrated teeth marks, hold down our command key, click the cone as well so that both shapes are selected, go up to the format menu, down to shapes and lines, and subtract shapes. What it does is it takes the bite out of the cone. Let's send this back to the back, arrange sent to back. I'll pull this down just a little bit more and this just a little bit more. And then let's select all of our shapes by click holding and dragging um, around the outside edges of all the shapes. They're all selected. Um, come to our arrange menu and group them together. And now I have one illustration um, that I can resize, that I can copy and paste and duplicate, that I can animate. Wow, I feel like an artist. The second activity using Keynote and building on the Shapes tool is the Keynote to Storytelling. And this one, you have some options for extending it even further. The basic premise is to use some sort of a story structure. Maybe it's a story spine that would give the students the initial framework for their creative writing. And then they would create a character in Keynote, which they would then animate to act out their story. In April's lesson idea, she encourages you to make the background in your keynote slides green, similar to the chroma color green. And then when you put it into iMovie, you can key out the green or make it invisible in order to put in another background. You can do this lesson even without this step of exporting and putting it into iMovie and taking out the green background and replacing it with something else. It's still a valuable um, activity for students to create a character and then build a story, um, even with animations in Keynote, using that character in it. Another lesson idea for Keynote is one that I know teachers have had a lot of success with. It's using animation builds and actions to put text or shapes in motion to show meaning on the slides in Keynote. Um, now there's a great additional resource linked in the course. It's another free book um, from Simon Pyle on how to do these animations in Keynote. And it really walks you through um, in great detail as well as showing you possible ideas for um, feeling like an animator, honestly, or letting your students use this resource to become more skilled at um, animating the shapes and adding the builds in Keynote. 
um, this would be an example of a student project that I'm just going to let play here shortly um, from a past student where a Shakespearean sonnet was put into motion by those keynote builds and animations and students were able to demonstrate understanding of the content based on how they created those animations. So you can see that they have a deeper meaning and understanding of the words just by using um, the, the context of poetry in motion um, to frame the lesson. This lesson idea actually comes from Teresa Pongratz in O'Neill High School and I remember her saying how it was one of her favorite projects she would do with students year after year. I mean, an adaptation would be to take um, found poetry, so finding phrases and words from a text and then students rearrange them to show their own interpretation of it. Um, and, and like I said, this is just one short example that actually um, you can watch in more detail if you visit it in the course. Another example comes from a math classroom, and this is just animating an equation step by step so that students can demonstrate mastery of how to follow the process of uh, balancing that equation or solving the equation. And so each character, of course, uses some fun builds and animations that young students enjoy, but by building this animation, students have to have that deeper um, understanding uh, of the process and not just putting a bunch of, of text on a slide. So there's really powerful things that you can do with Keynote. And um, I want to show you my favorite powerful animation um, that students often use when creating those illuminated text or um, animated equations um, examples. And it is a transition, actually, called Magic Move. I'm going to escape out and show this one to you live. And basically what I have here is a slide with multiple objects. I just found a, a copyright-free key graphic to put on the slide. I duplicated it several times. Um, and a few letters so we could see what it looks like with text. And I'm going to take this slide over here in my sidebar and just hit control click to duplicate it so that I have an exact replica of it right below. Now, the first slide is the way I started. The second slide looks exactly the same, but on the second slide, I'm gonna move things around and change it up a bit. For each image, I can change the placement, the rotation. I can change the size of the object. I can, oops, sorry, do whatever I would like to, to uh, mix it up a little bit. Sorry that I'm uh, not being var very artistic here, but it's just so easy to do. Um, and then with text, you can do the same thing. So I can move the text somewhere else. I can change the size of it. I can potentially change the color of it. I want it to stand out in a different color. Uh, maybe I want to make a shadow here. Whatever you choose to do. But those changes are going to be applied based on the... Um, the magic move. It's going to do all the in-betweens for you. So on my first slide here, I would then go over to my far right, go to the animate portion of the inspector, and in my transitions list here, which it's already on, magic move, but I can find it in my, my effects here, my transition effects. And you can see that it does everything for me. So I'll hit play now. My first slide, magic move to my second. Now, just keep thinking how simple that was, and you can continue working on um, additional steps to this animation, because this slide over here on the left, I can duplicate again. And now I can move things to new places, or off the slide, or do something entirely different. But if the same shapes exist on one slide, and then there's a magic move to the next, Keynote will do all of the hard work of the animating for you. So here's the first magic move, and here's the second. There's some great resources inside the course that will help you build on the concept of magic move even further. But I really guarantee you that if you show your students magic move one time, they will be able to go even further than I would have imagined with this one simple keynote skill. 
Another very powerful keynote feature is being able to do non-linear hyperactive or hyperlinks, um, like in this lesson activity, one that's similar to the choose your own adventure stories of, of the past, where students create their own interactive stories using the, the linking features of Keynote to take the reader on an adventure down various paths in the story. I've written this one up in a uh, Lessons for the Classroom course so that you could actually implement it in your classroom. And basically it follows this simple structure. Students create a story map of what would happen in the beginning, what would happen next, what choices the character would or the reader would have to make on the journey, and then what would happen at each of the branches of those options, where it would go next, where it would go um, after that. You can see on this student's example of their story map that the idea bubbles that are colored in red um, feature a dead end. Usually the character, something happened that ended the story and they have to go back to the beginning and try it again. Or sometimes you'll have paths that cross and intersect with other um, adventures along the way. So building that is a great um, opportunity for planning and creating for the students in and of itself. They then take that story map and transfer it to written text to create, to flesh out the, the plot of their story, the action of their story, and then they build that story in the form of keynote slides where the buttons become the choices that link to different slides. And you can see in this example a little bit about how it might look. So when we get to a, a slide that has a choice, I can either collect food or build a house, and whichever one I select has a different outcome. And um, the students loved creating these. They actually put more work into them than, than writing a, a normal, typical book. This same idea, the same concept, is um, easily replicated in something like a quiz show, a um, simple question quiz where each object or button or picture then has a hyperlink to go not to a website, but actually to a uh, different slide in this case. So you can see that these links are applied so that this image goes to slide 36, this image goes to slide 37, and this image here goes to slide 38. Now the right answer, of course, is the meadowlark. So the only one that will get us to a slide that tells us the next question is the meadowlark. You get to program that, though, and then let the viewers test out your links and test out their own knowledge. So you can do that with any shape. You just click on the shape or the graphic or the, the whatever's on your screen, the object, and then control click to get to the add link feature. And instead of linking to a web page like you might be used to, you would just link to a slide and then choose it from your slide list. You can even go directly to any number of slide. And now when we're editing in, um, in Keynote View, we can see the, the arrow showing that hyperlink. But when we play our slideshow full screen, um, you have to hover your mouse over to, to see it change to a hand to let you know that there is a link there. So it becomes a clickable keynote presentation that really can take the user on a path that they are dictating by their actions. To learn a little bit more about these um, interactive hyperlinks, I'm going to show you kind of an extension of this, which is creating these same hyperlinks as invisible buttons. And I'll let you watch that now. Some invisible buttons with features of hyperlinking within Keynote. We're going to start by placing a U.S. map or a graphic that shows anything with different sections on it on our Keynote slide. I recommend selecting it and locking it to the back of the slide so that it can't move when you add additional shapes on top of it. Now we're going to use the shape tool and you can use any shape at all because when we end up with um, hyperlinking the shape we're going to make it invisible. Um, definitely you want it to be close to the edges or the borders of the state shape in this example, but I think that that would be close enough without too much overlap on an adjoining state. Next in our formatting um, inspector, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of the style panel or the style tab and slide our opacity slider all the way to 0%. This is the key to making your buttons invisible. It is still a filled shape and we can still make it a clickable button, 
but nobody can see it. So you have to um, find it by exploration or um, by knowing that it's there. We'll just um, add that link like we learned in our last lesson and we'll just visit instead of a different slide, we'll go out to a web page. For the state of Nebraska, let's visit nebraskaproject.com and we can just hit enter to make that link active. Now on my keynote slide, when I'm editing the slides, I see the arrow showing that it's hyperlinked. But when I play this slide in slideshow view, I will not see that arrow. So you'll just find it by hovering over it and exploring. You can do this with any type of a shape. So I could use just even a small circle to designate the shape of, for example, help us find where Washington DC is located and then slide the opacity to zero, control click, add link, and let's paste in a URL here to take us to a student created project about um, Washington DC. And then finally, you can even build abnormal shapes by using the pen tool and do it in the same way. So the shape of California, which is not regular here, we can just draw some pen points on top of it, close the shape, hit enter, and then take that shape. And we would want to add just a color fill of some kind of color, but then slide the opacity to zero. And then we can, of course, link that with a control click, add link. And in this case, let's go back to the previous slide. Um, one thing that's important to remember when you're using these interactive hyperlinks within Keynote is to go to your document inspector and for the presentation type, change it to links only so that people can't accidentally advance to the wrong slide or a different slide, that they have to use the hyperlinks to navigate the slideshow. Now let's hit play and we'll see how it turned out. Um, I am hovering my mouse over and it's not doing anything when I click until I come to something that does have a hyperlink and that'll definitely take me out to that website and after it loads I can close out the website and go back to the keynote. Let's show how the Washington DC link would work. You just have to find it with the hand. It takes me out to the student project on YouTube to teach about our US government. In the American government, there are three branches. The executive And branch. finally, our California link, which is um, an irregular shape, so I can hover over the edges of the state borders and then click, takes me back to the previous slide. And there you have it, invisible buttons in Keynote. Finally, another idea with Keynote is to use it as a place for students to keep track of their learning as a portfolio or a learning journal. Um, there's really two key um, ideas that Keynote suits itself, lends itself well to here. The first is building a template so that students don't have to worry about layout and design. They can just focus on content. And so you can build slides that have placeholders for things that are important to um, what you want students to share with you. And the second concept is to, to get into the master slides and edit those in Keynote and really um, fine tune a consistent theme across all of your slides and um, use that in order to demonstrate and document your learning. These are just a few examples from my daughter Claire who loves to use Keynote to take notes. So whether it be a presentation she has to share back for class or just a simple note card divided into sections to show different facts she's collecting from research, um, Claire likes to create her own kind of templates and themes to facilitate that process of being um, engaged while she's learning in her classes. Keynote's a great tool for student note taking as well. Um, this is an example of a teacher template that I would send out to my students with placeholders in it that they would then um, put in the content to replace the placeholder and so again they don't have to worry about making the slides look nice they can just focus on their content on each slide and follow it along a step-by-step -step process of what I expect for them um, to show that they have completed the task.
One of my favorite uses of Keynote is to distribute a document to my students, which serves as a template for their challenge-based learning team presentations. The students personalize it with their original content, but they still have the benefit of the structure and the support to include all the required components, including text, images, and video. To publish their work, my students share their finished Keynote documents with the rest of the class and beyond, allowing for a more professional portfolio type presentation during the publishing stage of their writing projects. Keynote on iPad has truly helped my students become better writers and more confident innovators. Here's another example. This screenshot actually comes from iBooks author, but the same idea could easily be replicated in Keynote. It's using literature circles, learning journals for the students, and so each slide comes from the theme um, depending on which role the students um, are going through that day based on the literature, the novel that they're um, having discussion circles on. So if they're assigned discussion director, they would choose the blue slides. If they were the word wizard, they would choose the green. If their role that week or that day was the passage picker, they would choose the pink slides and so on. And each set of slides within the theme has the, the directions to remind them of what that role was and then a place for them to add their content based on the pages that they read from the novel. There's a bonus activity using Keynote and actually placing videos on a Keynote slide um, duplicated four times and rotated around so that they're all mirroring each other so that by putting a homemade hologram um, structure in the middle of the, the, the iPad that you're projecting it from, it actually looks like your video that you created and put on the keynote slide is being projected up through that um, hologram projector and it looks like a hologram. This is a great fun activity and whatever the video is inside of the hologram could be dependent on whatever concept you're teaching in class that day. The kids could de definitely generate these and I've got all the steps on how to do it on this URL that is of course linked in the course as well. So there's so many more ideas about using Keynote in the classroom that I could spend a long time, much longer than what we have on this Wednesday webinar. Um, I would encourage you to check out some of those ideas or send me an email and tell me what you'd like to try and I could probably find a way to make it happen in Keynote. Like I said, it's a readily available tool, um, accessible to um, all of our Apple devices and doesn't require a high learning curve in order to become a pretty expert user in it. So it definitely facilitates that creativity process um, at the same time that students are learning content. I encourage you once again to enroll in the iTunes U course and get more from how to use Keynote to share your learning and, and capture your understanding. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to me at katie at esu8.org. Thanks so much.